Cooper came into my life for the very first time in December of 2013 by way of social media. He was the featured dog in the Edmonton Humane Society's ongoing efforts to rehome abandoned or otherwise homeless animals. He was a cute dog, but I wasn't looking for another pet. Or so I thought. Because early in 2014, who shows up in my newsfeed again? Cooper. But this time, his story is a little sadder than before. Not only was he surrendered to the Edmonton Humane Society, but they can't seem to find anybody willing to adopt him. Despite being a beautiful senior dog with soulful eyes, it seemed that a new home was proving difficult to find. Cooper had some behavioral problems that made him less than ideal for adoption. He was listed as people selective. He was listed as pet selective. Uh, he was listed as having some house training issues. He also had some medical problems due to neglect or abuse or both. But he was rehabbing brilliantly from what I could see in the short YouTube video of him. But still, nobody seemed to want him. And before I go any further, let me just say that Cooper didn't manifest any of the warnings that were on his file for all the years that he was with me. He might not have been perfect, but he wasn't his warnings or labels. Not at all. Cooper was a dog through and through. As in, some dogs remind you of people, or at least children. I have another dog like that. He has the intelligence, cunning, and self-entitlement of an eight-year-old child. Cooper had none of that. In the best way possible, Cooper was just a dog. And when I say just a dog, I mean that Cooper was the purest expression of a dog that I have ever known. All the traits and characteristics that make dogs so amazing, Cooper had them. And that quintessential dogness was something that made Cooper special, at least to me. But also to the friends and family who could appreciate that about him. When I made the decision to go see Cooper at the shelter, there was a long lineup of people there to do exactly the same. Unbeknownst to me, Cooper had been featured on the morning news earlier in the day. It turns out that the local news station did these segments to help get dogs adopted. And Cooper was the star of the show that particular morning. And that was just fine with me, because honestly, I was not in the market for another dog. I even let families go ahead of me to do meet and greets with Cooper. I had this idea that he would be better off with a family, because he looked like the perfect family dog to me. But nobody wanted him. This beautiful dog, shy and unsure because of untold neglect, abuse, hurt, just couldn't find the right family for whatever reason. And in witnessing that, I knew that Cooper needed to be rescued. So, no, I didn't want another dog. But I wanted Cooper. And that's what's so painful about losing him. Cooper was the first dog that I chose. All of my other dogs were either strays that I found and nobody claimed, or they were already the family dog or whatever, something like that. But Cooper, Cooper was a choice and his loss feels profound, mostly because losing him feels like it has profoundly changed me, as grieving and mourning often does. People are rarely the same after either because grief represents deep emotional waters and mourning represents the effort it takes to stay afloat in them. And sometimes we are able to swim those waters. 
sometimes we can only tread them. But losing a loved one, even a pet, throws us into those unwelcome waters and it's up to us to navigate them. So far, I'm doing poorly. As many of my closest friends can attest, I do not process the death of pets well. I dwell on regrets. I tend to ruminate. I tend to second and triple guess my actions leading up to their death. I'm doing all that and more with Cooper's death. And I will likely do so for years to come if past history is any indication. That probably happens as much for how profoundly the loss changes me. But it also happens because of the changes that happened before that loss. Almost to the moment when I saw Cooper for the first time, all those years ago, not so much with his death, but with his life and mine becoming intertwined by fate or happenstance or whatever your belief system allows for. That's probably when the change occurred. All I know is that I miss Cooper. He was a big presence in my life. He took a lot of effort to care for in those early days and even more effort in the last few months of his difficult life. But he was worth all of it and more, and I'd give anything to have him back with me. I'm sorry, Cooper. I love you, and I miss you. You are a testament to why rescue dogs deserve a chance. Because I am a better human being for having had you be a part of my life. And as sorry as I feel for you in your passing, I feel sorrier for all those people who passed up on adopting you all those years ago. They missed out on the opportunity of a lifetime. I just hope that you didn't and that I earned your love even when I had to let it go.